Question 19. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals 2x plus 3 for the values x from minus 2 to 3. So there's many ways you can do this. The quick way of sketching the equation of a straight line is first of all to identify where it crosses the y-axis. So that's that point there. Then we look at our gradient, which in this case is 2. So that means that our rise over run is 2, which is the same as 2 over 1. If you've got a whole number, then you can write it as a fraction. So that means that from this point, every 1 we go to the right, being careful to look at the scale here, 1 is technically 2 squares. Every 1 we go to the right, we're going to go up 2. It looks a little bit strange because that's 2 and that's 1. It kind of looks like the same distance. But every 1 along and 2 up gives you the next point. 1 along and 2 up gives you the next point, so on and so forth. So I can plot that, that, that in quick succession, and then basically go the opposite way to get the remaining points on the left, which will give us this and this. So that is our straight line, y equals 2x plus 3. You can, of course, use a table of values as well if you put some x values in between minus 2 and 3. So you've got minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. You don't even need that many points, to be honest. You could just put in the first and last ones, minus 2. If you plug it into this formula here, you'll end up with minus 1. If you plug 3 in, you're going to end up with 9. And then you could plug 0 in to get 3. By plotting that point, that point, and that point, you'll still get the same straight line. And of course, the more of these you figure out, the kind of safer you are in terms of knowing that you've got the exact straight line. But in any case, that is the straight line for part A, 2x plus 3, which I'm just going to label given the question that's coming. Part B, show by shading on the grid the region that satisfies all three of the inequalities. So important thing to note when you're shading inequalities is you need to see the equations of these lines. Now we've already drawn the first one, um, just to even give it a color here, this here. We've drawn the line for where it equals, but we have a y is less than or equal to, let's call it the line, which basically means we care about when y is below the line. So everything that is below this line is something we're interested in. Technically, we also care about the line itself because it's got a an equal to. We actually, on the line is okay, but below that line is where we shade. So if we looked at that one alone, Shading the region in would look something like this. But of course, we haven't taken into account the other ones, so let's actually look at them. The next one we have, y bigger than or equal to 1. Well, first of all, we need to know what y equals 1 looks like and sketch it. And then after that, because we have a y greater than or equal to this line, it means that we're going to be above it. So we care about above this line. y equals 1 is this line here which means we care about all of the parts, all of the regions that are above this line, like so. Lastly, we have the line x equals x is equal to or less than 2. So we're interested in where x equals 2, and then after that, because we are less than or equal to this line, x is to do with left and right, so we're going to be to the left of the line. And the line x equals 2, there's 2 there, so all of the points on this orange line, that's x equals 2, should really label this. And we're caring about where we are to the left. Once you have all of your lines on, and once you've established which side of the line we care about, you can then, you can then shade in the region where all of the arrows point. So in this case, all of these arrows, nope, Let's get that. All of these arrows point in this region here. So that's going to be what you shade. At least I think it shade. Let me double check, make sure I've answered the question. Label the region R. We didn't actually need to shade it. Oh, well, it looks prettier. That is the region R. Done.